Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I can't believe it's been almost two and a half months since my last post. I mean, I just got started putting videos up and I got to 40 weeks and my baby was late by four days and I just really thought I'd be able to jump back, bounce back, have the energy that I had. You know, after all, it was my second time around and I just expected to kind of be able to get back to normal life, I guess. But, you know, it's been an adjustment and here I am, I'm back and just wanted to give everyone an update on what's been going on and have a quick uh, labor and delivery story to share with you guys. And I'm just looking forward to seeing more of you guys in the future. So labor and delivery, let me give you a breakdown of what all went down. Um, last video I posted was my 40 week pregnancy video. And so it was like on day 40 <laughs> and there was no baby coming. And so, you know, I went to the doctor and we were going to basically give it a week, um, and see if this little one would make her showing. And so she decided to show up four days later. And so we are enjoying her very much. She was a healthy seven pound, 15 ounce baby. And she was, uh, you know, larger than her sister who was only four pounds and 10 ounces. But it was a quicker delivery and just a better, quicker experience overall. It's like your body, I guess, has gone through it once before. So it knows what to expect and just does its thing. So it was midnight, um, January 31st, that I started having contractions. And I just was like, okay, let me make sure these are real. So I didn't wake up my husband or anything for about two hours. And they started progressing, uh, becoming, you know, more frequent and everything. And so, and it just kind of, they woke me up in my sleep. And I had been having contractions though for like a week and a half or so. Just mild ones throughout, you know, the day. And so... I knew that something was going on because they started coming so quickly. Basically, we were at the hospital. Um, we had called the doctor line and went to the hospital. They said, come in, because everything lined up for what they were expecting. I think we got there about five in the morning or so, because um, we had to wait for someone to come to our house and, and stay with my, my daughter who was sleeping, we didn't want to wake her up and take her to the hospital, have someone meet us at the hospital in that whole nine yards. We just thought we'd keep it simple, have someone come here. We had already set up things so that that could happen as an option because we went kind of went through every scenario and had like a plan in place. And I was able to leave her a little video that I was going to bring home baby sister and that I'd see her later. And so she still watched that video today and like talks to it and blows me kisses back. And so it's so adorable that she does that still. And she just loves her sister and she hasn't been jealous or anything. It's been a really smooth transition. Anyway, back to labor and delivery. Uh, we get to the hospital and get checked in and everything. I had pre-registered. And so we were pretty much ready to go and got in. That ride to the hospital seemed like the longest ride. For some reason, um, contractions this time around seemed like they were just more intense. And it seemed like they were like in a different spot than they were with my first pregnancy. And so, you know, just having labor, uh, I mean, having contractions on the road was just not fun at all. And I mean, I was able to breathe through them and everything. And I have a fairly high pain threshold. And uh, we got to the last road by the hospital and it was so bumpy. I mean, this road I drive down all the time, but this road, it just seemed like it was like twice as bumpy, three times as bumpy as it usually was. And I was just like, why did we come this way? And so anyway, we made it to the hospital, got checked in and Basically, you put your gown on and you're like waiting for your room and everything. And so that took a while. And so that was uncomfortable. Just, you know, just basically you're like cold and this a cold hospital room and your, you know, lips are drying out. And it's, uh, you know, you're going through contraction after contraction after contraction. And they're trying to, 
you know, do all this stuff to you while you're having contractions. And so got through that, got checked into a room, which was much better. And, you know, my first pregnancy, I was really gung-ho. I was going to do an all-natural childbirth. And, you know, I was ready to go and do it and was doing really well. And my blood pressure went up. And so um, they recommended the epidural to help the blood pressure come back down. Oh, they had to give me Pitocin on that one as well because my water had broken. And then it was like, you know, we didn't want an infection because I didn't get to the hospital till like almost a day later because um, I really didn't know my water had broke. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I was oblivious, you know, first time pregnancy. It was kind of like, I think it broke, I, I, you know, or maybe it wasn't my water breaking. And so because not, nothing continued after that, it was kind of like a splash and or a gush rather, a small gush. And then that was it. And I had like slept through the night until the next morning and no more leaking. And so I was just really uncertain, even after talking to the nurse line. And finally, I was just like, I think I should go to the hospital. And I did. And so that pregnancy kind of went a route of unplanned. Uh, you know, my plan wasn't followed and I ended up, you know, needing to have extra things done because my water had broken just to protect me and the baby. Um, and especially when my blood pressure went up, that extra precaution. So I just kind of went along with the recommendation at that point because I didn't want anything to happen uh, negatively and I wanted things to go as smoothly as possible. So since my plan was blown out the water that time, this time I was just like, you know, um, I ended up having to do that epidural last time. So I went ahead and did the epidural this time too. And I was glad to do it. Um, you know, like I had mentioned, it seemed like contractions this time were so much more intense. And I guess because your body's like moving quicker through the process and you're not having really much time to adjust to the intensity as I did on the first round, um, it just seemed to be not as bad <laughs> and so I didn't actually get the epidural until about six hours until I actually uh, began to push for delivery and so I had a nice six hours <laughs> of just relaxing and um, I actually got online it was a Sunday so I was able to get online and log on and to my church and stream um, with my church, which was really great. And um, she came that afternoon at 3.30. I was like looking at the clock and I was like, okay, she's gonna be here. I'm gonna have this baby by 3.30. And basically I started pushing and I only pushed for 30 minutes where the first time around I pushed for an hour and a half and labor was 15 hours versus the 19 hours with my first child. So that just shows you, you know, once again, your body knows what to do. And anyway, 30 minutes later, she was in our arms. And so the doctors and staff and everybody was great. And one cool thing that I noticed this time, which I didn't know how they did it last time, or if I actually pushed out the placenta, but this time with the placenta, the doctor, um, which was part of the team of doctors that I had with my first child, but this doctor in particular massaged the placenta out, which was really cool. Um, the massage felt like really great. Uh, I could feel it even though I had epidural, I guess, because feeling was like, you know, a little bit there. And so I didn't have to push anymore to get that placenta out. And I wish I would have taken a picture of the placenta because they were talking about how cool and how pretty and beautiful this placenta was. And like everybody rushed over to see it because it was like purple and everything. And I know some people encapsulate their placentas and everything. And I mean, I wasn't going to do anything like that, but kind of hate that I didn't actually see what they were talking about. Cause I was like, what does a placenta look like? What's a pretty placenta? But that's just like a funny side story um, that I thought I'd share. And so I was in the hospital a uh, one less day this time around also. They almost let me go home after one day, but my blood pressure started to go up just a little bit, but it regulated itself pretty quick after that. They just did it for precautionary reasons. And also they wanted to make sure that my daughter didn't have jaundice. And um, 
they kept like running tests and everything because they thought that she was going to have it, but she did not have it. And so that was a blessing that she was like healthy and passed all her hearing tests and everything. And basically got to stay with me in my room and we got to check out and go home after two days. And, you know, the first month is always the most challenging. And so, you know, that's when you know, losing the sleep and I'm breastfeeding and I'll probably do a separate video on breastfeeding. If y'all are interested, let me know. I breastfed my first daughter for 13 and a half months. So that was including nursing her for one year and then weaning for six weeks. So I have some great tips for that. That's my labor and delivery story. And I went back for my postpartum checkup and everything checked out great. I had was really, really blessed this time around because my weight gain was very minimal. It was 20 pounds, including the weight of the baby, plus all the fluid and everything. Um, actually, it wasn't even 20 pounds. I think it was 18 pounds. Um, my doctor was just like, you know, really happy that I didn't put on a lot of weight, like my first pregnancy, which I had gained 40 pounds. And so at 13 days postpartum, I had lost all of the baby weight, literally the number on the scale. I went in at six weeks and I was under my pre-pregnancy start weight by like three or four pounds. And my doctor was like, most people don't even get back to their pre-pregnancy weight. And so basically that was the way of the baby. Plus, you know, once your body gets rid of all the fluids and the swelling and your organ swelling and everything goes back down. Um, so I was really happy about that. And I've just kind of been like um, wanting, I've been working on eating better. Just, you know, it's supposed, you know, weight management is basically supposed to be what, 80% of what you eat and 20% exercise and everything and you know I've been so tired that by in the day or early in the morning I'm just exhausted and I don't feel like exercising so I feel like well I just need to make sure I'm putting the right things in my mouth and I'm not perfect but by all means I am um, doing better and you know making sure I'm taking those whole fruits and vegetables and everything and the grains and and the protein and everything that I need to stay healthy since I am nursing and I want to just make sure that my baby is, I'm taking care of me so I can take care of my babies. I am hopefully going to continue to uh, lose weight. I don't have a goal necessarily. I just want to be healthy and I do want to lose more weight. I just, I guess I'll know when I'm at a uh, size that I'm happy with when I get there. <laughs> so right now i'm just taking it day at a time and just enjoying being mommy and i continue to adjust all the changes with having a schedule of what is now a two-year-old because my daughter turned two three weeks after um my baby was my new daughter was born and so i have a two-year-old and a two and a half month old right now and schedules are lining up and it's getting easier every day so that's the update and it's going to be back so stay tuned thanks for watching my channel i hope that you enjoyed my quick labor and delivery story and that you'll continue to look for my post and subscribe to my channel uh, thanks so much for watching and i look forward to seeing you next time bye